Like many Premiere editors, I've always been curious if DaVinci Resolve is any better. We've always heard good things about it via the headlines, but it's hard for most of us to give it a try when we already have so many different projects that we're working on, and speed is key when it comes to getting edits done. However, it's a brand new year, it's 2020, I decided to give it a try to see how fast a Premiere Pro user can switch over to Resolve. It took me about a week, but honestly, it can take as quickly as one day. So in this video, I'm gonna save you some time by showing you how. Before we begin, a huge thank you to MSI and NVIDIA for making this video possible. They actually wanted me to talk about this MSI P65 Creator laptop with the latest GeForce RTX 2060 graphics card and how they can significantly boost the performance of Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, which it does, and I will talk about it. But on my channel, even if there's an ad involved, I still do my best to make the content as informational as possible. So even if you're not looking for a new laptop right now, you will at least get something else out of it. In this case, switching from Premiere to Resolve in one day. Now, I'm putting a huge asterisk here on the screen because everybody's workflow is different. It may take you longer depending on your editing style, but honestly, for someone to fully master a new editing software, it's obviously gonna take more than a day. However, because of the similarities between Resolve and Premiere, it makes it incredibly easy to jump into it. We just need a little bit of guidance and a few minor tweaks. This is far from being a perfect guide, so if you're a seasoned Resolve user, please, please, please feel free to let me know if I can do certain things easier and better. But this is ultimately for my fellow Premiere users. The easier it is for us to transition over, the more likely we are to give something a try. By the way, I should mention that a lot of the things that I'll be talking about in this video applies to the free version of Resolve, so you can technically get started as quickly as right now. And I'll be sure to know if any of the things that I'll be talking about are paid exclusive features only. Which, to be honest, there ain't too much of that. For me, I found that 90% of the functions that I use in Premiere on a day-to-day -day basis exist and can be configured similarly in Resolve. Because of that, my willingness to keep using the program increased significantly. For instance, I'm a huge fan of pancake timeline editing in Premiere, which means I can stack two timelines on top of each other so I can drag clips from the top to the bottom. This is my main editing style. Unfortunately, Pancake Timeline isn't something that you can do in Final Cut Pro 10, which was what prevented me from switching completely to Final Cut, but in Resolve, you can do this. So what I like to do first is drag all of my clips into a timeline. I call it the raw footage timeline. You can call it whatever you want. Do a quick calling process where I take out all the unusable clips and eliminate any of the quiet or shaky parts of the clips. Then when I'm ready to assemble my rough cut, I create the second timeline on the bottom with all of my A row, which is usually the main story, and drag down any relevant B row from the top timeline. This is how I edit 100% of my videos. This will be a good time for me to heavily emphasize that I'll be only focusing on the core aspects of video editing, which includes organization, assembly, cut, and the export process. So I won't be going over the Fusion tab in Resolve, otherwise known as the Effects tab, similar to After Effects, and I'll only be going over briefly the color grading tools. Those will definitely take you more than a day, but it shouldn't take you more than a week if you already have prior experience. With that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Biggest thing once you open up the software is the familiarity in the workspace. This will feel right at home if you didn't modify your workspace in Premiere too drastically. But FYI, if you did, just know that Resolve doesn't offer that same flexibility when it comes to moving windows around. Like Premiere Pro, we have different workspaces for each stage of the edit. Media is akin to import, cut is akin to assembly, edit is edit, fusion is the hardcore effects tab. Similar to After Effects, color is color, Fairlight is akin to audio, now some people would say Fairlight is very similar to Adobe Audition, but I don't know about that. And finally, Deliver is similar to Media Encoder. So the one thing that Resolve pride themselves in is that everything that you need to make a video is all in one software. You don't need to jump over to a separate application uh, just to do a certain specific task, sort of like dynamic linking in Adobe with Audition, with uh, After Effects. But as to how much better, let's say, Fusion is compared to After Effects, 
depends on how you use it. I mean, I don't use After Effects much to begin with, so if Fusion was missing anything, it wouldn't bother me too much. Okay, so we're gonna largely ignore the cut tab. This is devised to be a space efficient editing space when you're on a laptop and want to quickly put together a cut. It's actually pretty cool because you have an overview of your timeline above so you can quickly navigate to where you need to go. Try it out when you have the time. Anyways, go ahead and go to the edit tab, which is the most important tab because it's where you're gonna spend most of your creative energy on. On the very left, you'll find the media pool. This is where all of your source files that you pull into your project are located. You can sort out each individual clip to their own respective folders for need or organization. Now, right in the middle, you have the source monitor, which you can preview your clips and mark in and out points before you drag it into your timeline. Like Premiere, you can also drag video only or audio only, which is nice. To the right of that is the program monitor where you see your timeline being played out. And if you click on the inspector, it will appear to the right of your program monitor. This is where you'll be able to change a clip's opacity, position, etc. What's really nice is stabilization and cropping are also here too, which is handy instead of having you go to the effects folder and drag it into your clip like Premiere makes you do. On the bottom, obviously, the editor's canvas, the timeline, and you can find your effects library up in the top left corner next to the media pool. And if you need to toggle your audio meter, click on the mixer icon on the top right corner. So go ahead and take a moment now and pull in some of your own footage just to mess around with and follow along. So the next thing I would focus on are the keyboard shortcuts. And the cool thing about Resolve is that they know you're coming from something else. So they have keyboard shortcuts tailored to your previous editing suite like Premiere, Final Cut Pro, and Avid. If you haven't done any major modifications to your keyboard shortcuts in Premiere, this should largely play out the same. However, I did heavily modify my keys in Premiere, so I have to configure how I would edit in Premiere. I spent about an hour on this, but honestly, it's super worth it because once all of the keys are set up, I feel right at home. Also, I tried cutting a project together the first three days using the default shortcuts, but it just made the whole transition process so much more cumbersome. So one thing I found when modifying the keys in Resolve is that it's a lot more forgiving. And what I mean by that is if you change one thing, it doesn't have a severe impact to the rest of the program, at least for me. For example, back when I tried switching to Final Cut Pro 10, I modded the key similar to how I've had it in Premiere, just to find it butting heads with a lot of the functions in Final Cut. That's because Final Cut Pro 10 has its own way of being efficient, so if you mess with that, it tends to mess back. Now I'm sure Resolve is the same way, it has its own efficient way of doing things, and over time you might want to consider re-rolling back to the default shortcuts, but in my opinion, that should come after you feel attached to the software, not in the beginning process, especially when you're trying to get used to the whole software itself. Here's how I personally have my key for my style of editing. Q, Ripple deletes anything before the playhead. W, Ripple deletes everything after the playhead. Shift A splits everything at the playhead. S is for speed. And for zoom, zoom is usually defaulted to control plus and control minus, but I just simply made it to plus and minus without the control for quick zooming. And that's pretty much all I do. It's very simple, very minimal, but it's super quick for me to cut something up together. Regardless if you choose to go with my keys or customize your own, from this point on, you can actually start cutting how you normally would. The next few topics I'll be covering are arguably the most common tools in Premiere that a majority of editors and creators would use. These are the three S's, stabilization, slow motion, and speed ramping. All three of these work surprisingly well on Resolve when you have a powerful graphics card. In this case, the MSI P65 is equipped with the latest NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 graphics card, which boosts performance through GPU acceleration. What all that technical mumbo jumbo means is that it can speed up complicated processes, like stabilization, for example, instead of having to wait five minutes just to to find out that your footage is complete jello, you will find out in one minute. Not only that, but it also works with the AI of the software. In this case, Resolve's Neural Engine. So if you were trying to do slow motion or speed warping with a 24 frames per second clip, you can. Do it through optical flow. The Neural Engine will use machine learning and AI to fill in those missing frames to try to create a fluid slow motion clip. 
Again, with the GPU acceleration, that whole process will be faster. Now, this doesn't mean you should only shoot in 24 frames per second and let Resolve take care of all the slow motion for you. No, it's not a miracle for everything, but for the few times that you're like, ah, oh, man, I wish this would slow down just a little bit more. This will give you a higher chance to make a clip much more usable than before. Anyways, if you happen to be in the market for a new laptop, make sure to look out for NVIDIA RTX Studio laptops like the MSI P65 Creator. NVIDIA is working with both hardware manufacturers and software developers to help creators get things done faster through GPU acceleration. In fact, just to show you how powerful this laptop is, I am playing back 8K red raw footage on this laptop. That is insane. 8K. Anyways, enough nerding out. Next up is basic keyframe animations. It's super similar to Premiere. You just have to click on the keyframe button to start the keyframe. Move slightly over and make the adjustment. What's different is that you can't move the keyframes in the inspector window. You have to go into the timeline and expand the clip. From there, you can drag the keyframe from one edge to another. And if you're like me, I love abusing the copy and paste attributes across multiple clips feature in Premiere. Oftentimes I keyframe some animations on one clip and I want to use the same animation in another, I would just copy and paste in Premiere. Resolve made this slightly annoying. Instead of just pasting, you have to use Alt-V to bring up the selections and select the options that you want to paste. But it at least will remember what you've selected before. Minor annoyance, but I can honestly look past this. So after a basic rough cut, I like to start putting in titles and lower thirds, and you can find these in the effects library. Some of the preset ones are kind of weird looking, so I just use the basic ones. But I especially love how Resolve inputs text. I don't know, it just seems a lot easier than Premiere. And if you have to deal with a lot of subtitling like I do, I personally myself often have to paste English translation to a Japanese video, the subtitle portion is its own layer which is incredibly nice and it has proper character auto spacing. Like holy cow, I've never quite figured out how to better do this in Premiere other than using a text sequence. It's super annoying to do because you have to manually divide up the line when the characters get too long. I know Premiere has a closed captioning option, but I like this way of subtitling way more. If you know how to properly do it in Premiere, please, please, please let me know in the comments below. Moving on to the audio tab, you can find the compressor, the limiter, and the dynamic EQ here. You can also use this tab to do ADR, additional dialogue recording, and I use this a lot for additional voiceovers that I need to do. So after the audio, I like to do my color grading last. Resolve does have an adjustment layer in the effects library for those of you who are used to color grading with an adjustment layer, but do know that Resolve is a dedicated color grading program, so I heard that the adjustment layer isn't necessary. Again, the whole color portion is a separate thing that you'll need to spend a different day on, but the basic primary functions are all there if you need to quickly color correct. And let me go ahead and show you something really cool. In the studio version, you can actually use the face refinement feature to track a person's face in the frame so you can make color adjustments specifically on the person's skin. It's the same as Premiere's color picker, but Resolve actually tracks your subject. Again, this is just another feature that takes advantage of the GPU acceleration so you don't have to mask or track the face yourself. Speaking of color, I'm actually quite impressed with the color accuracy of the MSI P65 screen. So it gives me a lot of confidence when I was color correcting this footage. And lastly, the deliver tab, exporting your video. I've heard on the internet that you shouldn't use the YouTube uploader just because it gives off the compression artifacting in your video. So just do H.264 a master. Now we're not quite done with this video yet. There are a few miscellaneous things that I have to go through for your transition from Premiere to Resolve. So first off, let me start off with optimization. I will link Epos Vox's video. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his channel name right, but this guy goes a lot more in depth and takes the time to explain how each optimization works. But if you do notice your timeline playback is a little bit laggy, try creating optimized media. Essentially, it's like proxy files in Premiere Pro. Go to playback and select use optimized media if available. Then go back to playback and select render cache user. 
Now you can right click on your clips and generate optimized media. It's gonna take some time for Resolve to generate those proxies, but when you come back, the editing process should be a lot smoother. Personally, I haven't had to do this. The MSI P65 Creator has a 9th gen Core i7 processor with the RTX 2060 graphics card, so it handles the 4K video files like a champ. Which is surprising when you look at the physicality of the laptop. It's ultra lightweight and ultra thin, 4.2 pounds and 0.7 inches thick. It comes with the Creator Center software, which optimizes hardware and software settings, depending on the app that you're running. And the NVIDIA Studio RTX drivers are pre-installed, so you don't have to worry about it when you get an RTX Studio laptop. And even if you're just using the laptop for productivity like Word docs, emails, and web browsing, the battery life can last up to eight hours. Oh, and the silky glass touchpad is smooth as f <clears throat> So now I'm going to blast through some of the minor but helpful things to keep in mind for Resolve. A lot of these are common functions of Premiere that I'm sure you use as well. Fade in, fade out, pretty simple. You just drag the little white marker to control how fast you want the fade to happen. Auto save. Not gonna lie, Resolve is not immune to crashes, though it doesn't happen too often. Just make sure you control how often auto save happens. Title save area, you can find it in view. To sync clips, just simply highlight the audio and video file, right click and sync clips through waveforms. For multicam, you will need to be in the media tab, highlight all of the clips, right click and create multicam. But to be honest, I've never really liked the ways that editing software sync up clips, not in Premiere, not in Final Cut Pro, and certainly not in Resolve. They either make it way too complicated or flat out don't work. I've been using Red Giant's Plural Eyes for years now and it's by far the best. Relinking media. Like Premiere, you just have to point it to the right direction to where the files are. But unlike Premiere, where it would find everything in one go usually, with Resolve, you might have to select the same folder a couple of times until it finds all of the missing clips. It's pretty weird like that. And if you want to paste things in other layers, just make sure you turn off this diamond icon in the main layer so it doesn't overwrite your other clips. Match frame, same as Premiere, press F to pay respect. And uh, I think that's it. If I'm missing anything, just let me know in the comments down below. So does this mean I've completely jumped ship over to Resolve? No, not yet. I still have a lot of projects that I'm currently finishing up in Premiere, but any new projects coming in, I'll be throwing it into Resolve. And if this video does well and you guys are curious, there will be an update. Hopefully this video has helped you guys out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.